good morning good afternoon good evening happy bringling welcome to the day 5 of bringle blended meetups for our very own 21 days business sustainability challenge entire bringle team along with women lines solworks and purnam foundation had a very interesting weekend where lots of people from all across the globe was asking about the speakers on saturday and sunday which was actually the weekend we had realized that everybody had assumed that this 21 days business sustainability challenge means it would be consistently for 21 days without a break and then we realized that we had also not spoken about it very explicitly so we would like to share this with everybody that our intentions are to bring positivity in these tough times as well and pushing us not to concentrate on the problems but to find solutions and if we do these things continuously for 21 days it becomes a habit now these 21 days are also important for having a persistent work and follow all the 100 steps to become a unicorn through the five stages of the entire life cycle but it doesn't mean that our mind doesn't need the rest remember our first day where we spoke about healthy mind stays in healthy body so it's a necessary break and that's why you have weekends while our entire core team was working and thanks to the entire core team for the same we are also inviting businesses or startups from all across the globe to upload their business presentations at www.bringalacademy.com/course/business-sustainability and we would select 10 businesses with whom we will work to help them become a unicorn and help them achieve their billion dollar dream we would also provide them cross border markets with a scalable and sustainable model now coming back to our today's topic who is a customer what does customer want i would just like to share a small scene from a bollywood movie called made in china where they have actually demonstrated or spoken about customer the customer is an idiot i mean just a joke around but customer doesn't know what they want and the messaging is it is what we have to tell them what is good to them yes they are a king they have a need but they also do not know what's best for them and sometimes we don't need to sell the product but we need to sell the brand with this i would like to request charu to introduce our speakers today and start the today's day for 21 days business sustainability challenge very good evening good morning and good afternoon everybody myself charu mehrotra founder of online magazine womenlines.com which is listed in top 40 online women's magazine to follow in 2020 do subscribe it the subscription is for free it is my immense pleasure to welcome you all to the show today and the topic for this whole week will be customer focus today we are going to be enlightened about why should we believe customer is a king customer is a king is an age old business mantra accentuating the importance of customers in every business traditionally this rule usually entails a company's promise provide good customer service to where the customers but with the current evolution on work and business settings coupled with technological advancements customer is king means more than just good customer service so let's get enlightened from our speakers for today who will be sharing with us i will love to introduce our esteemed speakers dr arjun vatya ceo of the herbo lab india private limited dr vatya is a new age ayurvedic products business founded by a family with the 150 years of ayurvedic heritage over the years 
where their family members have passed down knowledge that has now led to 96 FDA approved formulations for Ayurvedic proprietary medicine produced in Ministry of Ayush Aprovay. The company's aim is to take the traditional science of Ayurveda to modern consumers worldwide. The Habolab India Private Limited brand was recently featured in the Forbes 30 under 30 Asia list and Business World 40 under 40 list and voted the Amazon Youth SMB of the Year. In June 2019, Dr. Vadya part partnered with the USD 6 BRP Sanjeev Koenka Group. Then we have Serena Menzis, who is Executive Vice President at Khanna Host uh, Hotels Private Limited. With her 25 years of experience in several senior positions with ITC Hotels, Obroy Group of Hotels, Prospects for People in the UK and the Club, Mumbai currently Serena is an Executive Vice President Sales and Marketing with Khanna Hotels Private Limited that manages www.theclubmumbai.com and owns the Taj Bakel Resort and Spa in Kerala. Passionate about people, customer service and hospitality, her role and contribution has been strategic with a focus on providing successful marketing delivery and growth programs, building high value partnerships in the marketplace and in the area of hospitality and fine living. Welcome, Serena. Thank you. We have Mr. Mahesh Ranade, CEO, Yuva Parivartan. His business career for over 30 years is spread across skilling and education, BPO, telecom, and business automation industries. He has headed SBUs, SBUs managed PNL, and held CXO level positions in sales and business development, customer service, and operations with leading corporates. Yuva Parivartan is a collective effort of transformers, visionaries, corporates, and the benefactors. An NGO which was credited in the Kherwari region of Bandra is now brimming with endless energy and has spread across the entire nation. In 19 years of its existence, Yuva Parivartan has shown a tremendous growth. The parent center has now branched out to over 650 centers across 18 states of India, which includes 67 livelihood development centers, more than 600 partnership centers, five jail centers, and over 3,000 mobile rural camps. Welcome, Mr. Mahesh Ranade. And then we have Devaspati Bhatt. He's director of DBEE Consulting, enabling experts with 25 years of comprehensive and cross-cultural experience in heading people management operations and proposing innovative approaches and solutions. Integrated individual responsible for heading all human resources, functional initiatives and objectives with a broader business plan and is a primary leader for driving successful change management within the organization, drawing on all aspects of HR functional skill to ensure balanced strategic decision-making. We have such a wonderful panel today. So my first question goes to Dr. Arjun Vadya. Doctor, you have been the sixth generation doctor who is carrying the legacy of Ayurveda with you. However, you are changing the way of presenting it to your customers. Like earlier times, patients used to come to the doctor. Now you are using the digital platforms going to the customer. Why you thought about this change? And how is the patient different today than they were before? Please share your opinion. Sure, so I think a uh, <clears throat> very interesting question to start off with and sort of very relevant to the times that we are in today as well. Um, considering the amount of sort of conversation around telemedicine and sort of digital delivery of medicine as well. Um, so as some of you can see, I'm actually not at home today. Uh, we are still functioning in our office and I was telling Anshav this as well. Uh, sort of before a few folks joined, we're oh. delivering an essential service. And so uh, we are actually functioning um, to help people get their medicine, um, even in this time. Uh, I think um, what's really important is that um, as sort of time has changed and as the digital revolution came to India, uh, we saw an opportunity in the fact that although my family has been in Ayurveda for 150 years um, and, and sort of passed down formulations from generation to generation, 
um, my grandfather and great grandfather ran one very successful clinic in Bombay. Um, although people wrote to them via post, I saw a huge opportunity in taking our family's formulations and and sort of the high quality Ayurvedic care that we have um, from one clinic um, to consumers across the country using the power of digital. So how do we do this? Basically, my um, my family always believed in offering a free consultation. Um, so even if you came to my grandfather's clinic or great grandfather's clinic, you never were charged for a consultation. So we said, if we have this philosophy and we have this sort of principle in the organization, can we take this free consultation using the power of digital media? So today we've sort of over the last three years that I've been running the business as a startup, uh, build India's largest Ayurveda brand online, but also been able to give people access to Ayurveda right now, largely in India, but across the country. So 83% of our consumers and patrons are actually outside the top 10 cities. We fulfilled um, and helped consumers in more than 16,000 pin codes. And that's the reason I'm actually at work today is that um, there are people sitting at home in lockdown who aren't able to get their Ayurvedic medicine, but also not able to consult an Ayurvedic doctor. So through WhatsApp, through video call, through phone call, through email, through text message, we are working around the clock to help people um, be able to speak to an Ayurvedic doctor and as far as possible, deliver them their essential services. So I think that's changed. If you talk about the way the customer has changed, I think there's one change, um, which I've noticed at least over the last two years, which is that a lot of text-based communication um, has increased as opposed to phone call or video call. So if you ask me, <clears throat> what's the number one channel that consumers want to talk to you? Um, it starts with WhatsApp. Although the consumer may eventually do a phone call or a video call, what's most interesting is this customer wants to start the conversation on WhatsApp, have the first sort of three, four, five interactions on WhatsApp, and then move to a sort of communication on phone or video call once they establish trust with the brand. So I think that's a big change in the consumer. I think uh, amazing... Uh something you are blending the old uh, you know philosophy and the legacy that is passed down and which is and also you're looking at the business it's a blend of uh, giving free free means it's service and uh, that is the ancient scriptures talk about uh, that you're following and you are also looking at how the business is also essential today and you're reaching out from bombay to the world that is that shows the 83 percent of your uh, business is happening Fantastic uh, view, Charu. I think uh, yeah, amazing I'm, start. <laughs> definitely. I'm so excited to know more. So Dr. Vaidya, one tip that can help the audience to bring value to their customer clients as a king and what special efforts one has to take it on daily basis. Can you share with us? Sure. So I think um, <clears throat> in the seven philosophies that our company has, um, the last and most important one for us is customer is our reason for being. I think for us, um, we don't call them customers. We call them patients. We call them patrons. Um, but uh, <clears throat> the fact that, you know, even amidst lockdown, uh, we have our factory still functioning and we have our factory functioning at 40% capacity and our office functioning at 15% capacity because we know that in this time, um, it's most important. Uh, I mean, for us, sales is not important. For us, money is not important. It's when I was hearing our customers call and say, hey, uh, lockdown or no lockdown, I still need my medicine for my kidney stones or I still need my medicine for diabetes. I think that's the most important for us is yeah. if we're seeing our consumers, our partners, people who support our brand, support us through thick and thin. In these times, if it means that I am, and, and today you can see my hair is disheveled, etc. I was actually unloading boxes from a tempo right now um, because um, we don't have enough of our team to do it. So for me, that's the most important thing is um, can you be there for your customer whenever they need you most? And um, for us, it was not even a question. Once we got the curfew passes from the BMC uh, and once we got the sort of authority letter from the collector in Silvasa, we said we are resuming work um, because that's our uh, sort of duty um, to our consumers in this time. And, and especially in the most difficult times, if they can at least get access to something they were used to getting access to, I think we're doing a big service. Oh, yeah, thanks for scary. being part of essential services. Uh, that's a yeah, great it's really, uh, service uh, you're doing. Yeah. Great. great work, uh, Mr. Vatwe. I think uh, this is a commendable work, especially starting from your forefathers who started free services and the way it is going on right now. And in these tough times, I mean, I, of course, you are still in office and I can see that uh, you've been working very hard on the same. Thanks for being there for the community. Uh, yeah.
so dedicated uh, customer service take key other key words we should be following friends so my next question goes to serena serena you been huge experience of managing customers and building the client community in the current scenario retaining customers is more critical so how are you doing it and what's your advice for us Please. Right. Hi, everyone. I finally got through. <laughs> so, uh, it, it it helps to have a son around, a teenage son, so you can quickly grab his laptop. <laughs> anyway, good afternoon and hi, everyone. Um, well, as you know, I am from the hospitality industry, and um, for us, a lockdown is a total lockdown because um, uh, we are a, a hospitality service that attracts people and a gathering of people. So for us. It, lockdown was absolutely uh, shutting all our services and not having people um uh, come to our product and our services uh, now that's challenging very very challenging because people are used to visiting us it's part of their lifestyle it's part of the service that they're used to um uh, people come to dine at uh, our restaurants people come to um uh, you know use our spa treatments they come to the salon they come for their health fitness services so um we all went on a on a thinking uh, bandwagon on how we will connect with our with our customers how because you can be easily forgotten uh you can uh, you know once once this whole thing opens up people are going to market themselves so strongly and so um uh, quickly that you your services can be forgotten uh so we uh, kind of had a, a huddle the senior management and we we started thinking what can we do uh so we have about 3500 families as our customers we uh took the database and we divided the database between ourselves okay. and each one of us took hold of 50 customers each mm. and what we decided to do was to uh, communicate to them but communicate to them not with the standard messages that we hear oh hope you are safe hope you are i uh, hope you and the family are well and you know uh, keep keep in doors keep stay connected we all decided to do something different and something unique in our own own way and i think that is the whole purpose of uh, reaching out and that would help to retain your customers one is personalize your communication to your customer um because it can in this whole world of tech uh, you can go so tech that it becomes unpersonalized so because we are an industry where personalization is so important we are a very high tech high touch industry and that is the strategy we have uh, we have adopted so it's not we will use technology technology is great to reach out but the high touch factor is very very important so um i i'll i'll share one or two examples that we've done um so i write poetry and uh, you know that morning sunday morning when uh, there was the curfew um i don't know a po- I, i just wrote a poetry and um, it it spoke about uh, you know how we have forgotten nature how we have not been able to hear the birds because of the noise that we have in the city and is this what we are going is this the kind of legacy we are we are going to give our children so so i mean to cut the long story short it was a a, a poem i think that could touch many people's hearts and um uh i dedicated it to the children we have about 1000 children as our customers so i wrote a message to all my customers saying this is dedicated to the lovely children that i see at the club every day uh, which i am missing now so you know i think these are the things that people uh, will read will get touched by and uh, my take is um people will never forget what you did for them how you made them feel mm. what you made them what you made them feel and how you made them feel and how you did it you know i think these are the things that stays with with a customer for very very long time and i think even on a personal level we always remember how people made us feel whether it was good or bad if it was good great if it was bad it it does have a repercussion so i think um, that's very key um i put a small acronym together which is very easy for people to remember and it's called lack l a c k so um l stands for listen to what your customers are saying a stands for act you have to act and do something to reach out to your customers c is communicate 
without communication, you're not going to say that uh, you care for your customer or you mean a lot or you are my valuable customer. And K is know what he is up to and know what is relevant to him and know what he desires from you as a product and service. So for example, the next message I sent out after about 10 days to all my customers was, so what are you guys up to? And there was amazing answers I got back. So uh, Sam Balsara, the managing director of Madison Communica uh, Communications messaged me back saying, my job is to water the garden. You know, somebody else said, my job is to sweep and mop. Somebody else said, my, uh, I, I make the breakfast. And these are guys, these are men who are very busy, busy guys in their jobs. Uh, somebody else actually sent me the president of Sony Entertainment. That is um, Mr. Gupta. He uh, sent me a message and pictures of the food that he had cooked for his family. He made wow. zucchini fries, he made Spanish omelette, he made barbecue, uh, chicken and prawns. And you know, it just connected. And uh, I think I think this is so I know what he was doing. Now I took that feedback and we used it. Okay. So we the next message we sent out after about three days, uh, three weeks, uh, two weeks was um, mom and kids. If you all are putting a piece of art together on canvas on paper, please save it for the day we open the club because we're going to have an art exhibition of all that you of all that you created. For the men, if you've been cooking at home, please save those pictures, save those recipes. There's a chance for you to get on our menu in our restaurant. Uh, there's somebody else who said to me, I have been, I love singing and I love music and I'm honing that now. So we decided, so we said, if you're doing that, when we open up, we're going to have an open mic at our bar. So these are the kind of ideas that you can use to reach out to your customers and to make them feel, hello, we are here, we are missing you. And the last thing we did was a message that we sent on Sunday saying that we really miss you at our second home. So we, I'm sure it won't be long when we will open our doors and see you face to face. So I think if you touch people's hearts, if you are uh, genuinely hospitable, if you are genuinely uh, customer oriented and customer focused, um, at the end of the day, your customer is a human being. He may be the president or a managing director or a senior executive of whichever company, but he is a human being first and he has a heart and he has a family and he has desires and he has a need for your product and you have to stand out of the clutter that is uh, happening in the market. You have to stand out in the clutter and the strategies that people are coming up with. It is very easy to copy paste other people's ideas, but to make it your own, to have your own out there, that takes a lot of innovation, a lot of thinking, a lot of creativity, and they're just small things that you can do that would make the person's experience far, far, far uh, uh, memorable yes. and uh, a loyal customer uh, for your product and services. So I think that's all I have to say. I'm just amazed. I mean, <laughs> all creative juices you have used in such fantastic ways. Amazing. Yeah. So friends, yeah. let's take a note of it. Personalized communication with the customers and giving your presence and listening to them and giving them opportunity to share their side of stories. I think that's a wonderful suggestion. And Charu, I think, uh, you know, we, I was just going through this and I'm a researcher of gender neutrality. Yeah. And one of the part comes is, is, you know, the woman leadership. What she, what woman leadership brings on the table. So she brings a lot of human touch, emotions, Definitely. you know, uh, trying to connect with people. And I think Sarina has uh, completely, you know, given the perspective of that in her, in her talk. She has just taught. <laughs> I agree with you, Rashi. Yes. How health. to connect? Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, fantastic, Beautiful. Sarina. Uh, Thank you. So Sarina, one tip. I will ask you that can yeah. help the audience to bring value to their customers as king and what special efforts can be done on a daily basis. Please share. Yeah. 
uh, I think instead of uh, telling people what to do and suggesting them what to do, because okay. you know your industry the best. Correct. I don't know your industry and I cannot give you a tips that are relevant to your industry. But um, I think certain marketing and customer service principles should not be forgotten. So I'll just warn you about one thing which you have to always remember uh, okay. in any industry. And this is re relevant to any industry. Um, research shows that it, it costs you 10 times more to get back a customer that you have failed to retain. So if you have lost a customer, you have lost him for 10 times more the cost. So you have to keep that in mind. You know, I mean, you have, you can do whatever you, when, when we have a marketing strategy and there's a spend involved, a lot, a lot of owners, company uh, directors say, but that's going to cost us. That's so much of a cost, but uh, please uh, value, evaluate that cost compared to the cost that you would have to pay once you lose the customer. So it's a lot of, uh, you pay, you have to spend 10 times more to bring that customer back rather than to retain him to certain marketing, clever, creative strategy. Fantastic. So yeah, let's take note of it that don't get, let your customer go away so easily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your sharing. Thank you. So, uh, Sarina, I definitely had a question with you because you have yes. given a wonderful perspective of customer retention. Yes. Uh, because customer retention is, I mean, one is customer acquisition and second is all about retention. Retention is definitely has to be a more stronger strategy. Uh, my question to you is that how do you look around uh, in terms of your internal customers? Because ultimately the handoffs are happening with the internal customers who are our employees, partners. It could be, you know, any vendors who are kind of working into this entire uh, value chain. So how do you take care of those internal customers so that they can take care of the external customer of yours? So what is your perspective on that? Right. So what we've done is we have a uh, WhatsApp. We have a several WhatsApp groups um, of our departments uh, in terms of the directors and then the uh, senior management and then the wider wider uh, group that uh, uh, is very, very customer focused. So one of the things we just came up last week was uh, what are you doing at home with your family and with your children? If there's something interesting you want to share, we would like you to send us a picture, a photograph of what you've been doing and caption it and the best caption or the best thing will win a prize or something like that the other thing that we are doing is we are um, making sure that one set of group of people call each other regularly at least once a week to find out how we are what are we doing um, so there are some creative things that people are doing at home we are sharing that to pictures and I'm sure many other people are doing that as well uh, but um, I think to keep the spirits high and to keep everybody uh, you know um, uh, looking forward to that day when we will open. I think uh, there are a lot of things that we do in, in, in internally to keep that going. Yeah. I mean, we missed out our annual day, which was supposed to be on 1st of April. So, you know, there was this whole thing that went round in keeping them, keeping them engaged. Yes. Great. You want to say something, Asha? Uh, yeah, I want to. I want to. I want to say one more thing. And another thing we have done is we are encouraging uh, e-learning or online learning with, okay. with all our with, with all our employees. So there are a lot of online courses that are going around, and people are. Uh, we are encouraging people to do these courses so that when we when we open and to encourage each other, spur each other on to do these courses and to develop your skills because in the hospitality industry the long working hours 12 14 hours a day people work and they don't have time to reskill themselves and to to, to develop themselves uh, for the future so this is an opportunity which we're encouraging people to do so it's not only fun but it's also learning that's fantastic planning i must say because you're using the time very positively and it is for gaining something for everybody for the customers yes. for the employees so congratulations for coming up with such wonderful ideas. Thank you so much for sharing. Thanks. <laughs> so uh, Ashav, I'm continuing with the questions. Uh, no, Charu, I think please go ahead uh, with other speakers. Yeah. I will, uh, you know, let, let others also ask sure. questions later on after the speakers. Sure, ask. after this. So uh, Mahesh sir, my question uh, to you is, as your experience is versatile and now you are dealing with such customers who are from givers to gainers. 
how you managed to build 650 centers across 18 states. Please share. Yeah, sure. Uh, so Charu, before I come to that, I just want to say that uh, my transition from, uh, you know, uh, from the getters. So I started uh, dealing with customers who were MDs and CXO level people and business owners and so on when I was in the business automation industry. Okay. From there on to telecom, where the customers were commoners, I mean, people like you and me, mm -hmm. uh, who would pay us 500 to 1,000 rupees a month to use telecom services. Okay. And also the services to now where I am, which is, uh, which is an NGO, where the customers are school dropout youth, school, oh. dropout youth, school dropout youth in villages, and okay. school dropout youth uh, in urban slums. Now, remember, these are customers who can barely read or write. Okay. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, taking from where Dr. Vaidya was talking about, I think one big difference, uh, you know, that we have to contend with every day is that our target customers can barely read. And uh, therefore, uh, the communication with these target customers has to be either audio, um, either it is person to person, yeah. or it is audio and audio visual. Okay. Uh, in fact, in fact, we train about a hundred thousand, uh, one lakh such youth every 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 year uh, across the country, okay. and uh, and the six hundred fifty uh, you know centers that you mentioned uh, mm -hmm. is a vehicle through which we reach out to these hundred thousand uh, customers. Uh, the 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 one fact which does not leave us is that whatever training you are providing. Mm -hmm. cannot be in the form of either uh, uh, it cannot be in the form of text at all uh, it has to be someone speaking to them either okay. in person or audio visual uh, so that's that's one big change one big shift for me uh, to have dealt from customers who are extremely literate and highly educated right. to custom to customers who who can who can barely read or write anyway having said that uh, your question uh, of how have we managed to get the 650 uh, uh, centers? You see, uh, today's world is all about partnerships. In fact, uh, you know, about 25 years ago, uh, the companies in India, and about 50 years ago, even globally, would do everything themselves. So there was a time when General Motors uh, used to manufacture every single nut and bolt that went into their cars. Then came a wave. Uh, where people started outsourcing. So they would make the engine of the car and maybe the body of the car, but the spare parts and various other components, they started outsourcing. From outsourcing the next phase, and in fact, I have seen outsourcing uh, as in business process outsourcing since I was working in that industry for about 12 years. There was a time when uh, the organization to whom you would outsource the work, you would treat them as vendors. And therefore, the term used to manage these people were called vendor management. The paradigm has now shifted in the last 10 years. Now there are no vendors. There are only partners. Okay. And these, these 650 centers that you are talking about, uh, these are basically our partners. Uh, these are people who, are, who share our passion for social service to work in villages uh, and in our kind of communities. And uh, it is the common passion uh, to serve the subaltern, which basically has brought us together. Uh, how we have been able to attract each other is a matter of logistics. Uh, you know, we, we, have, we have about uh, 1,500 people walking the streets uh, every day in India in about uh, 3,000 villages and about 35 towns. And uh, we are on the lookout for such people. And uh, the good part is that there is no dearth of such people. In fact, there are so many people who want to do good in life. It is just that somehow the right opportunity does not reach them. Okay. The, moment, the moment people find that there is an opportunity whereby they can make a living and yet at the same time uh, do something for the good of others, there is no dearth of such people. And that's how we have been able to get the 650 uh, partners on board across nearly 600 towns uh, across the length and breadth of India. Uh, however, Chanu, there is one point that I wanted to mention. Please, uh, you know, take, uh, yeah, taking away from the earlier discussion, I think Anshita asked a very, very relevant question, uh, which is about the internal customers. And my experience in the NGO world 
is that it is the internal customers who are more critical than the external Okay. because the external customers the kind of customers that we have people who live in slums and who live in thatched huts their expectations in any case are not much if you give them anything for them it is it is what they did not even think of but to manage the internal customers who reach these people in the villages and there are 1500 of those internal customers those are the people who are driving our mission they are the people who work in our organization but most of our time or a large portion of our time has to go in managing these customers now so management of internal customers for us and i am sure for a lot of other ngos is extremely important and uh, you know how do how do we do that because a lot of these people who work in the social sector uh, are people who for example uh, do not understand english they haven't really gone to college uh, or maybe some of them have gone to college but their ability to use technology uh, to understand processes systems targets reviews powerpoints is not there mm -hmm. however when we as the management have to run an organization which trains 1 lakh people every year uh, across uh, 2000 3000 villages we have to run it like any other professional organization so there is a big uh, there is a big balancing act that we have to do that for the management it's like any other operation it's like any other business which is systems processes technology accounting and the people who are going to deliver this on the ground are people who understand none of it what they have is the passion to work in villages and to do good for the society managing such 1500 people is really the the the, the, the most challenging aspect of customer service for and this is internal customer service that i have come across in my 34 years of work now for doing that one is that one has to get down to their level so we have a system in our organization that all our policies and uh, programs which are typically in english are necessarily converted into hindi and vernacular and each communication is has to be translated into these languages and then has to be sent across multiple channels so mails is one part sms is another because lots of people don't have whatsapp in villages so all they receive are smss then some people whatsapp uh, very importantly that in spite of doing this their ability to read and comprehend even a hindi or a vernacular written message is, is challenging for them so we have what is called a system of samvad we call it samvad which is uh, which is uh, which is a bridge 300 such people every friday okay. over an audio call okay. and all important announcements and whatever else we are planning to do as also what is it that they want us to do their feedback it all happens by the spoken word uh, and and people receive it rousingly because for them somebody speaking to them from bombay and they getting to interact with 300 other people across a country across villages across dialects is is a huge uh, uh, is a huge occasion for them and every friday 3 to 5 pm for us is like uh, a, you know is festival is a festival of festival of connection so that's that's uh, uh, you know i i was dwelling on this because it is the internal customers for us who get us the external customers uh, you know the other thing was uh, you know what we call the lifetime value of a customer okay uh, somewhere i think sarina was mentioning that if we lose a customer uh, then the cost of acquiring a new customer is 10 times more uh, than the cost of retaining an existing customer and uh, i think every industry every manager has to basically calculate as to what is the value that this customer is has the potential of giving me or to my organization over his lifetime it's not the value that he or she brings to you in the next 3 months or 3 years but it's the lifetime value and if you take operational calls based on lifetime value versus lifetime cost then i think one is able to really optimize uh, optimize efficiencies so Uh, that's what it is i think customers uh, what they expect is that you speak to them in their language they must feel comfortable with you 
so there was a time as i mentioned to you when i used to go and call on the mds of the companies at that time i think my personality had to be entirely different today when i go to a village or even a slum in mumbai for example there is an area called park street in vikroli just to give you one example if i go to the park street area in the slum and if i am wearing formal shirts and black polished shoes etc those people would be extremely hesitant to speak to me because they think that these are people who have come from uh, you know their glass houses and therefore when you interact with customers like that you have to really get down to their level so what is it that they are thinking what language they speak what clothes they wear if you do that and win their trust then they are yours so i think uh, my uh, my uh, my experience in the social sector has been that while a cost corporate customer is literate enough to know his options so if one service provider ditches him for example or jolts him he knows how to redress himself or herself uh, and he can always walk away to a, to, the, to a competitor but in the space of social service uh, you know the space in which i work now these are customers who if you if you if you jilt them once they would be scarred for life because they not being very educated they do not even know how to redress themselves and therefore with them the softer aspect uh, the the connect and pulling at their heart strings and the element of trust is something which is of absolutely paramount importance amazing insights sir it's the best way we can mold ourselves as per our clients i think that's the best service which we can give to our clients so uh, yeah. yeah. shall i want to say something yeah sharmila say Yeah. Uh, Mahesh, uh, for everybody, Sharmila is a co-founder of Pringle. We bring a lot of value. She works on disability. Yeah, Sharmila. Um. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Uh, I have been working in in the social enterprise for about twenty years, and the one thing that I do is. motivate there is nothing else that works so right what you said about the people on the ground i have worked with uh, with the district in aurangabad in ahmednagar and uh, yes. sugarcane workers the school uh, uh, children Uh, of the sugarcane workers, migrant workers, that is all right. that worked. Uh, the teachers were motivated to uh, make them learn, and uh, yes. there is this. Uh, there are so many things that I would like to share with you. So I'll connect. Right. Separately on this, I am going for hours on this. I okay. I have I have a huge uh, uh, bank of experience in the uh, disability sector, uh, which I will I will want to share and work with. on uh, uh, with you people as well sure thanks sharmila for i'll oh, connect with you uh, i think with this uh, yeah am i so uh, see with this uh, mr ranade the main part i think she is trying to uh, work out is that she has been working lot much on the disability sector and uh, one thing which you have very yes. nicely explained is that if you are going to a chawl or a slum you have to behave like them you have to feel at par with them you cannot go in your yes. must you know in your fully good cars and you know nice suits and all that but so, so the, the, there is a kind of a relatability which we call it is in the sales thing common ground uh, yeah. and i think that common ground is very very important uh, charmila is is basically coming in from that perspective and 
uh, we also try at our side at the bringal side when it comes to platform when it comes to the people that we can have a relatability concept around that and right. uh, that is where uh, you know the, the the whole concept comes in so i just wanted to appreciate the point which you mentioned because you might be having a, a good amount of experience and thing but when we have to deal with these people you have to have those people who can talk their language and who can right. talk their language they, they are our internal customers so we have to make them happy Absolutely. first before we can make external like customers happy true absolutely yeah. so much, Yeah, yeah, and I was just yeah. looking at the numbers that you spoke there, Yuman, because you are you are training one lakh students. You are going into two thousand, three thousand villages. You are talking about hundred, one thousand five hundred. You know, people walking on the street, six hundred and fifty centers. These numbers are not easy to achieve. It's it's, and you are talking as if every day you know what numbers are there, right. and every weekend three hundred are on call, and you are calling it festival. So it's a festival now from three hundred to one lakh, and that's that's the best thing you talked about. So, and, uh, in fact, in fact, Rajshri, I've actually went on to his office in his head office in Mumbai, and I've seen this happening. People are literally on the you know con in the conference rooms, working around, looking around their problems, connecting with their six fifty centers. There are many centers which does not have connectivity. still they try to connect with them resolve their problem on a war footing basis so whatever it is talking about i have actually seen happening you see everybody here everybody is doing something so unique and at a mega level uh, you know you be to mr vaidya you talk about sarina or you talk about uh, mr ranveer it's like so beautiful to see yeah charu yeah very true rashri So, sir, I will ask you one tip that can help the audience to bring value to their customers as a king, and what special efforts can they do on daily basis? Do on a daily basis yes. to bring value to customers, right? One tip, right? Yeah. yeah. I think uh, I must tell you this that regardless of the level at which any one of us is working, mm -hmm. unless you speak to at least two customers yourself directly every day. Okay. So, which basically means in a week you can speak to about fifteen customers or fourteen customers. out of this 14 customers you should be able to speak to about five customers who are prospective who are still not yours but you are trying to knock on their doors and about 10 customer eight customers who are your current customers and two customers who have ceased to be your customers if at all you said you have such a category if each employee can speak to 14 customers a week that feedback tells you what is to be done to get new customers and to retain all that you have This is a tip that I think is relevant for every organization across all industries. Awesome! Thank you so much. It's really golden tip, and uh, we should all, we all should be taking a note of it. So now my next question goes to Devaspati Bhar. Uh, with your twenty-five years of background, how you define customer, and what advice you can give to the CEOs to drive that behavior in leaders? Can you share, please? Yeah. Good evening, all. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. first of all before getting into the subject i would like to thank uh, mani for introducing me to such a wonderful uh, group of people who are working at various field who are experts in the various field customer has been defined in various ways over a period of time it's an evolving definition for us there is nothing called as one definition for customer if you look at it 20 years back the customer's definition would have been something else Five years back, it would have been different, and now it is different. And tomorrow, after the lockout is over, lockdown is over, the definition of customer may change. So it's very difficult. In all the circumstances, if I have to define, as per me, then the customer is one who is looking for the best product or services at its ease, at his ease, actually, mm -hmm. on time with all qualities. imbibed in it that is what the customer comes to me there is no compromise in that that is why i think we always call him as king because his expectations are something totally different and above what we are thinking sometimes so you may not not even understood their expectation and we try to delight or satisfy then we may fail then ultimately i am defining the customer in a wrong way that's what comes to my mind 
So keeping that in mind, recently I was listening to one of the speech of Josh, Steve Jobs. Actually, he says, "Get closer than ever to your customer. So close, in fact, that you tell them what they need well before they themselves realize." that should be our approach in understanding the customer rather than you know going straight away and asking for it i think we need to get into that connect with the customer that is the customer for me or that is the delight for me as sarina has mentioned they get in touch with their family members kind of things they constantly get in touch they know what their customer need being in the people domain most of the time my customer will not be able to express what exactly they want ultimately we have to get involved and we have to help them to evolve what exactly is better for their organization that is where i think we become their partner rather than the service provider at the end of the day i so like that statement as, as yeah. rightly mentioned by mahesh sir that you know we are no more looking at a vendor kind of a thing or service provider we become their partner in their success that is where we have to evolve as the definition of the customer itself once we understand the definition i think we have done with their service part of it i think we will be able to give them the best whatever they want that is where most of the time we fail that's why the definition of the customer is make him as a king understand all his requirement before he expresses it this is what i want so that we become their service partner or whatever it is partner in success let us say that's first part of it the second thing is for the ceos or the entrepreneurs or whoever you call it as mm -hmm. one is if you treat customer as the king where i have to place the queens <laughs> okay as for okay. me even there is a slightly there is a divert uh, this thing by there is a article from patricia no no she was working at pwc some time back okay so she was mentioning our internal customers or employees are the queens wow mm -hmm. most of the time the queens are indirectly managing the kings okay so when you are taking care of queens the kings are happy and they they are on the cloud nine you don't have to worry too much Very okay true. so if that is the approach i would like to refer with my experience i have evolved at one triangle okay one is the organization or cell the second thing is the employees the third thing is the customer outside if you are taking care of your employees to the core or treating them as the queens let us say in this metaphor they in turn take care of the customers who is external expecting the best and the best of the services from the world and in turn the customer himself will take care of the organization that's a simple formula which you can adopt in our service or in our product i think nobody can stop us in becoming success this is what i believe and that is the one thing every leader should understand in handling the customer it's not that leader alone will handle the customer he has to create more leader to understand the customer and deliver their best in any organization whether it's a service industry whether it's in something else that is what i would like to highlight about what is the definition and what is that ceos or the leaders in an organization has to do to do best in the this domain thank you very much Awesome share, uh, Devaspati. I love the concept of queen and the yeah. way you have used the word partner because it just changes the whole approach, the way we see towards client, yes. and it can really help a lot to give better service to a client. So, so uh, when he was talking you. about Charu Queen, yeah. I just remembered when you play chess, queen has more power. Correct. If you read all the scriptures, they say you can reach out to Lord Krishna if you pray more to Radha Rani. Radha Rani. Exactly. Reach out to Shiva when you pray more to Shakti. Parvati. So, <laughs> so he is given the you know the core uh, uh, the clue that Clean. how yeah. to you know make your kings happy. Happy. You know the power is with your queen. With your queen. It's a fantastic yeah. metaphor, no, Mr. Devasmith. Outside. That's what I mean to say. You you made your point wonderfully. Great. Yeah. 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 Thank you. So, yes. Uh, I want. Yeah. 
please i yes, please. i want to say something on this metaphor of queen and the power of the please, women sir. yeah please sir the, the the sector in which i work you would be amazed to know that 70 to 75% of our beneficiaries are women wow okay i mean uh, even my staff we have we have no problem of gender equality in fact we have gender <clears throat> inequality because about 65% of our staff nationally including in villages are women okay uh, okay. uh and you would be amazed to know that this whole problem of livelihoods and employment that we are encountering in india today you go village to village and you know dwelling to dwelling in an urban household the women are more enterprising they are more ambitious they have the will to do learn slog and earn for the family and men generally are unmotivated it is it is a challenge for us to motivate an urban youth who is 25 year old to come learn and earn whereas when we go to that household the daughter of the family or the daughter in law of the family or even the mother of the family is far more willing to do That's so it, it actually it is it is a fact which is not very commonly known in the in the middle class and the uh, and the and the, in the higher middle class or the upper class uh, echelons of our society that india even today is actually a matriarchal society it is a women force which is actually driving this country and the households and not the men folk yeah correct i really That's agree cool. with you sir so there was pretty can you give one tip <laughs> that can help the audience to bring value to their customers as a king yeah, and uh, it can be done every day on a daily basis it can be done on an every day it's very simple to tell you very frankly if you treat it as simple let's not complicate the things let's remember aim a i m as a formula wow we have one more formula <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay uh, wherein you should be able to make your customer aspiring to do something more what he has done yesterday Okay. That is A for me. Aspire them to grow. Aspire them to do something more than yesterday. That is, as a service provider or as a developing partner with him, it's my duty at the end of the day. The I stands for inspire to achieve that. With my support, with my motivation, with my storytelling, I should be able to inspire him. So you have got everything to do. Why can't you attempt? Why can't you do this now? That's the second one. The last is. once these two things are there manage them properly that is where our expertise in the arena of people development connecting them connecting with them and making them successful comes into picture that's why i always says aim stands for aspire inspire and manage so that they become successful and they become lifelong partner with us okay yeah because i am in the area of people management services providing lot of hand holding in terms of people management internally as well as external i am also a life coach and executive coach and i am also a trustee of couple of ngos in bangalore wherein we we work on time share basis for underprivileged children actually okay so in all the areas what we will do is this simple formula we aspire them to make something better we inspire them to do something better compared to yesterday and we start managing their emotions as well as their day to day activities that gives the success for me thank you very much over to you great tip devas thank you so much shamila you want to say something i saw you yes. raising your hand uh, yeah i have a query uh, uh anjal you have a query in fact uh, one uh, on the feedback part for the yes shamila i have this query uh i found and i missed out uh, on that part So you want to ask something? Yeah, Sharmila, you are on mute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had uh, we had been discussing this on the customer feedback with very small teams. Uh, we have large base, but small teams. Uh, there are so many startups. A large base of customers, but very small teams who can't handle the uh, inflow of feedback. How how do we handle that? Yeah. So I will just add to it, Sharmila. Thanks for uh, sharing that. 
uh, see in the current scenario we have probably few corporates i think mr ranade is actually in the league of corporates and running a large institution uh, but when it comes to startups or small businesses or even medium businesses they won't have this luxury of having a dedicated teams of customer managers or you know taking those feedbacks and improvising it onto that because they are already struggling with their day to day work uh, from the customer feedback point of view so that we are connected with the customer as well and uh, you know we are able to continue ex- you know with our existing customers as well or retain our existing customers for whom this question goes to so this question is open to everybody i mean no, i either would, of the speakers uh, of the speakers anybody can pick it up uh, because this is a common question whoever yes. can answer this from the speaker yeah okay so uh, let mr ranade let me make an attempt there was the key bar after uh, ranade sir i'll yeah. go we start with sir ranade yes sir yes yes yeah so I, at the outset i must say this that uh, generally the organizations try to provide very small resources to customers uh, especially customer engagement they provide lot of resources to customer acquisition but when it comes to customer engagement and retention they they tend to provide smaller resources uh, i would give you uh, i would give you an example uh, there are organizations who expect you to service yourself either on the net or on the ivr and they would discourage you from either calling their uh, uh, helpline and actually speaking live to a customer service executive or they would discourage you to visit their branch now there are economic reasons for this because handling a telephone call of 3 minutes costs about 12 rupees and it's not easy to spend that kind of money handling a customer inside your office is even more expensive because you are paying rentals electricity this that whatever what the organizations do not realize is that the moment the customer understands this and you drive this philosophy to its extreme they start leaving you and that's the difference that you have between an organization who who actually forever expects you to sell service to an organization who says call us we are happy to help and it is generally the latter organization where the customer stays i think even if it is addressing sharmila ji's question directly even if it is a small organization where you don't have too many resources you have to size your organization and your customer intake within your capacity of handling those customers don't add more customers if you can't handle the present ones number 1 number 2 it is a fact it is my own experience that as a startup uh, even the owner himself probably has to spend about 50% of his or her time in managing customers and the balance 50 could be divided between 30% in acquiring customers and 20% in managing customers uh, so whether it is the ceo who is doing this job or the two or three other topmost people who are doing this job or your economic model allows you to outsource this to some other team but the fact is you have to find resources to manage those customers otherwise soon you will stop acquiring customers because enough bad word would have spread about you in the market <clears throat> and sub customers would stop uh, would, would start leaving you so i think one has to really take a call as to what do i do but unless you build in your model the bandwidth to handle the customer uh, it's 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 not a very scalable situation yeah um can i add something add? here yeah go ahead yes. simran uh, right so um my take would be uh, completely from a hospitality point of view uh so we had um, i'll i'll retrack a little bit from the time when we acquire customer so we have a sales team that acquires this customer and there's a um price that the customer pays to uh, to purchase our products and services and to be part of uh, our hospitality um now what we what i realized was that is one stream of income now the other stream of income is where you retain him and you make this product a part of his lifestyle and a part of his everyday life 
so that he visits us more often and then you monetize that visit of his each time he visits us and each time we uh, we um, uh, kind of uh, woo him to come to um, uh, to the club or to the hotel why because um, the more he visits you the more he spends the more he comes to uh to the club for the recreational activities le leisure activities he will spend in the restaurant he'll spend um uh, going to the spa he'll spend and he'll think okay let me uh, let me enroll in a sporting or an uh, or a fitness uh, activity now how do i bring him there so my next my next uh, challenge was or my next strategy was to create a sense of community there indians love to do things in uh, crowds in groups in uh, with a set of friends with mm. their family they don't like to be alone we kind of unlike the westerners where they want some peace and quiet we don't like peace and quiet we like noise and people around mm. us and we want to eat with a lot of noise in the restaurant uh, initially when we opened the club and we had people people used to actually come to us and say itna sanata hai it's so quiet do you not have any customers so we used to actually say to them uh, i think we are just doing the opposite we are giving you peace and quiet you know this is where in bombay city will you get a place so peaceful like this so um we um, i mean that was just um, a passing comment but a lo lot of there's one sort of people who come for the peace and quiet and there's one sort of people i, I mean if you and i go to a restaurant and it is quiet and there are just two tables instead of being happy that there is less noise in a restaurant we'll actually say i think nobody comes and eats here probably the food is not very good you know so um keeping a balance of both i mean you want your peace and quiet you can have your peace and quiet but we also realize that we need to create a sense of community at um the hotel and at the club so that people come for that people actually come for the enjoyment and for in enjoying their lifestyle uh, mind you uh, these are very rich people these are very wealthy people and uh, we must remember that there are very a lot of lonely people in this world so they actually come to the club only so that they can talk to someone so that they can uh, uh, strike a friendship with someone that they can have a meal with someone and you monetize that okay so that was one way we did did uh, did uh, that and we saw a gap and we filled that there the third third thing was we said indians love celebrations right we love any celebration whether it is a festival whether it is valentine's day whether it is any day i mean i'm sure there will be an anniversary for covid also and we will celebrate <laughs> so uh, so uh, what we did was um, well i i went to my boss i went went to my ceo and i said we cannot just have four sales people we i now need a set of people who will come up with marketing activities and i need activities for children for senior citizens for families for sporting and for um and a kind of uh, different things we do like the wine festival and things like that we need to create an activity and create a buzz there so he looked at me and he says but that's going to cost you know who's who's going to who's going to pay for all that so i said see the children's activities will have to be complimentary because if the children are happy the mother and father are happy they will come more often and they will spend and they will you know eat at your restaurants otherwise why would they eat in your in your restaurants so he said okay go ahead with that and with the other activities what we did was um i said and i think i put a axe on my feet i said i will build my own marketing budget and he looked at me and he said how so i said well let's get some sponsors and partners on board i'm sure there are many other people many products and services in this country who want to target the same people like your mercs and your bmws and your real, real estate guys or whatever and i said we'll get them to sponsor the event so you get your costs covered through the sponsorships and all these activities have to have to come with a price to the customer he is not going to get this free for the community uh, that we are building here or the festivals that we are celebrating here or the kind of uh, quality that we are pro we are providing them so um, that was one way in convincing my boss to uh, you know to tell him that you know your costs are going to get covered in fact you're going to actually make money if you do things like this so we have things like stand up comedies we've got theater nights we've got wine and wine evenings and we kind of 
pull that customer in and it's um, i mean they actually come there saying okay what's next what's going to happen next so it's it's a way of uh, customer service custo- uh, sustaining and retaining your customer adding value to his experience and also uh, earning money right yeah wonderful that's yeah it. That's so wonderful. can i attempt yeah now there was the king <laughs> the king is talking yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh thank you see as far as me me is concerned whether it's a big organization or small organization feedback plays a very vital role no doubt about it in its growth we have got some myths about technology nowadays the technology is not so costly also in today's world it's becoming cheaper and cheaper one of the option for collecting these th- kind of data would be a technology itself that's one way of addressing the feedback mechanism or keeping our communication channel with <clears throat> all our clients or customer open always so that they are free to express and give the feedback the second thing is i always speak or think from the people perspective point of it because even the survey says our productivity or optimization is not at 100% as of today we look for people resource optimization or resource optimization how i can optimize the available resources how i can make use of the best available resources so that i will be able to manage more client within the available resources can i restructure can i get into reorganizing something that is another way at which you can always look practically go to your da- uh, design board and start looking at things how i can optimize my available resources most of the time we always look outward as i mentioned earlier why don't you look inside the organization what all the things are available am i utilizing all the resources to that optimized level as of now most of the time answers are no because that's my experience is the third is whether you will be able to outsource these activities at the end of the day you will get the data which is relevant to you and you can able to take some decision whether you have to enhance or increase your team size or you have to manage with that at least you will get a gist or i don't want to go with gut feeling in business so keeping that in mind you will get at least some data available to you is it really important for me to increase some resources within that department so that my feedback mechanism or connection with the clients are on every time these are all the three things comes to my mind when i speak about the feedback from the client thank you over to you <laughs> thank you so much the rest of the can we I'm have sure something from yeah charu I, i was just going to answer I yes think, dr uh, vedya yeah, yeah please you sort of uh, summed up uh, very interesting thoughts i think just um, to sort of go on what mahesh ji said for our organization at least uh, the principle is very clear and what he said was um that once you have a customer it cost uh 10 times more to acquire a new customer so spend your time on retention of customer during this period when sort of business is lean work is lean we're spending a lot of time at home a lot of us are actually focusing on look we have this database of our, about 5 lakh people who've interacted with our brand over the last 3 years um we don't know how the world's going to open when the world opens but this is the sort of rich bank of value that we have as an organization what can we do to engage with these people obviously going to specifics of our industry makes no sense but i'm saying from a theory perspective this is what we own these are people who have seen value in us and what can we do now during this time period to help them during this period which is what we're doing now but what can we do as a brand to better service these consumers whether it's sort of keeping in mind what they need whether it's serving them in better ways whether it's improving the customer experience on our website or improving the call experience etc i think one more thing which he said was really important is um there are a lot of companies try to push people to ivr to try to push people to automated communication so there are cases when you cannot have an automated communication funnel and so there were times when my team came to me and said hey look we're getting 5000 whatsapps a day this is absolutely unmanageable let's remove whatsapp from our website Uh, and make it a live chat which is sort of easier to access and my view to that was absolutely not 
if the customer wants to interact with you on whatsapp you need to build the organization capability to be able to interact with them on whatsapp it's not direct revenue for you you will not see whether you answer 4000 whatsapps it will give you the revenue or not but what's most important is if the customer wants to interact with you there whether it's whatsapp or email or text message regardless of what conventional wisdom gives you you have to be there and so if it means hiring six more people i am very clear with our investor that our customer service team will grow as our as our team grows and as our business grows and we will have no hiring restrictions here because that's most important for us you can say hiring restrictions on any other division any other department but if it's customer service no hiring restrictions at all because for us that's critical wonderful thank you so much dr vadya for sharing uh, so yes yeah. rashtri can uh, we have the panel discussion yeah uh, uh, the question answer uh, session just yeah, Anusha. i think yeah Anusha. Uh, just a moment i think firoz uh, firoz do you have any questions you want to explain something yes uh, i like to add something uh, here it's a very uh, relevant topic uh, i'll just drive something from my experience as a it manager for uh, xerox kuwait and the first training when i joined uh, xerox uh, kuwait in 1996 the first training which we got was customer first second nature so uh, this so your your video is not open if you can just quickly you know yeah, you can open yeah, i'm i'm going to move today so i'm just uh, oh, the, okay, okay. my Sorry, connection will drop today please if go. i start the video so yeah. i just like to derive my, my experience over yeah. there <clears throat> and the top the question which was put up regarding the feedback uh, with regards to small or big organization we had a team of 35 people in xerox kuwait <clears throat> and this customer feedback when it was introduced we had this challenge of optimizing the cost and what uh, xerox insisted that we conduct this and what we had done is we had four teams and we had four teams of five people each with one supervisor and they put 3 hours of taking customer feedbacks every day with their supervisors on a rotating basis and once this was introduced it had a it had a very positive impact uh, versus that once the supervisor himself of the team was attending the customer feedbacks he came to know that what are the pain points of the customer when his team members knew that the customers have direct access to our supervisor every one day in the week they their productivity really improved and the faults reduced the customers when they realized that on consistent basis uh, the supervisors directly not only the engineer supervisors are receiving our feedback and we are interacting with them it really en enhanced the trust of the customers and it increased the revenue so we received three objectives that the customer feedback the uh, basically four the cost reduced because the in, uh, we are utilizing the current resources only the productivity improved faults reduced and the sales increased because the trust of the customers really increased with xerox square and uh, it served both the ways top line as well as the bottom line so this was my small live experience as a it service manager of xerox square and you know the quay uh, xerox is number 1 in the world and one of the key pillars was that they always treated the customer as the king customer first second nature was their motto over to you as well thank you so much firoz bhai for this example and uh, i would really want to highlight that i think the all the experiences which has been shared and including dr vadya's part that even though it might be tough for you to manage the whatsapp messages if customer wants to connect with you through that you have to keep the channel open you cannot keep that you cannot close that channel unless you make your customers make comfortable of the new channel onto that and uh, i think uh, linkage to the seniority is could be the another thing with this i'll keep my mouth shut now and i will leave this give it back to the forum and uh,
please uh, feel free to ask your questions uh, timran uh, could you please switch uh, you know open up uh, the session the chat window for uh, uh, question and answers question answer, or yes. you make me the host i will take care of it yeah. so all over to you rashri now uh, i think uh, i'm sure you can go through the because i can't see the chat if you can take the questions yeah so uh, please start sending the chats to me i will take up the questions accordingly uh, in between if somebody wants to uh, have any questions you can raise your hand on the zoom i'll i'll unmute you and uh, you can talk I think today our speakers answered all the questions before even uh, audience could think of it. Yeah, so actually speaking, it was a very quite insightful session. Yeah. And uh, we got really a lot of learning today, especially from the customer uh, feedbacks, internal customers, external customers' point of view as well. Uh, uh, probably there are some. Let me just try. Uh, you know helping people to i just uh, you know give the access people to unmute themselves and talk and uh, i'm opening up the chat window as well okay so raina says lovely session don't think uh, i mean if she has any questions i can see yusuf joining in and uh, you know listening very very patiently for a very long time and uh, yusuf i know that uh, you are a big influencer and uh, a, you know following on the customer experience part do you want to add something on the customer experience and the, what we, how we should treat customer as a king Well, you know, I I think I think uh, it it was it was a really really good decision. I uh, a really good session. Uh, apologies, I couldn't join uh, before. Uh, today today is the last day that uh, fortunately, unfortunately, here in Singapore, we are still leading a normal life because from tomorrow it's lockdown. So um, yeah, so so I mean, I I you know I I was really busy all day, so I just I just got in and I wanted to join the session. So I think I think I mean uh, customers, um, you know, customer is king, and I think I really like that king and queen comparison. I think I think that that was uh, that was that was really good. Um, the 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 one thing which I would like to which I would like to uh, bring out here is is basically um, you know it's an acronym which I use, right? So. with with any industry whatsoever um you have to always keep in mind that your customer or your client is savvy s a v v y now i'm going to break that down i mean i i do a lot of acronyms in in what i do uh in sales training and business development training so so savvy basically is you know each and every client that you have especially with the advent of technology they have the opportunity for search engines to compare on so that is the first s of savvy the second one is they have access to your competitors at their fingertips the first v is each and every customer wants value for money the second v is they always have access to variable sampling and the y is they they have a yearning to be understood and not to be sold to so to to to, to sort of summarize it you know it's it's so important for each and every um business entrepreneur to make sure that you have a strategic differentiator in what you are doing because uh you have to stand out from the crowd and that is so so important and that's where i think you know some of the speakers actually brought up a very very good point where um it's it's imperative for you to ensure that the consumer experience or the customer experience the cx is adhered to at every single moment and that starts from your internal employees your internal employees are your biggest brand ambassadors that any company can actually have and that is uh, and that is something which a lot of clients a lot of companies don't uh, listen to or don't uh, you know put a lot of focus on and that's the reason as to why some of the biggest companies of the world have actually failed because they have not given the importance to their internal employees to actually bring out the essence of the offering 
Um, I think the other day, uh, you know, we had a very good session with Pooja and uh, uh, Dr. AJ Minai and stuff. And, 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 and Dr. AJ brought up a very, very good point, which uh, I would like to reiterate here. You know, you know as, as things are moving forward, there's a very fine line between how people are becoming, or, or rather brands are becoming people and people are becoming brands. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to ensure that, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, you, you know, the fine line that a lot of people feel is like, you know, it's a lot of people feel that they can hide behind the corporate identity. No. You have to have that personable attachment that you're following or your target market can actually sort of uh, resonate with. If they can't resonate with a person, they will never be able to resonate with an entity. And that is most, most important. And that's where a lot of companies actually lose out is because they're only focusing on their personal branding image. And that's the reason as to why some of the biggest brands in today's world, they are known for certain people. Uh, I'm just going to give a few examples. I mean, Bill Gates, right? Steve Jobs, you know, he's, he's passed away. But, you know, Apple, Steve Jobs, that's the first person who you will think of. Uh, you know, uh, Richard Branson, you know, my, my, my business idol uh, from Virgin. You know, you know, these are people who have actually, they carry the brand on their shoulder. And that is so important. So, you know, that's, that's the first aspect. So you have to have a strategic differentiator uh, for 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 you to stand out from the crowd and each and every person each and every client wants value for money all right everyone wants value for money however that value for money is not an intrinsic request it is an extrinsic situation where it's so important that you're not bogged down by the dollars and cents because people, yes, they will make a decision maybe to a certain extent regarding you know, their budget, but people make a decision based on emotions. And that is so important. So that's where the value comes in with, with, the, with, the, with the perspective of having the, the money element or the budgetary element, which, 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 which forms a very nice uh, uh, you know, interaction with that. Now, uh, the, the last part is basically you know, variable sampling, I, th I think that's, that, that's very, very straightforward. You know, you have to, a lot of people don't understand the importance of, of giving your client a sampling of what you can do. I'll give you an example. Um, I, I've spent most, uh, most of my adult life and uh, my working, working life in Australia. And uh, I, used to, I used to own a Lexus, right? So each and every client uh, you know, uh, who owns a Lexus in Australia is in the central database. And I think it's, it's, it's prevalent for all the, all the European or all the, all, the, um, all, all the other car manufacturers. But it was very interesting what Lexus did. So during one year, when they were having the launch of one of their new IS sedans, they actually called all the Lexus owners. They asked them to come in. They asked them to keep their present Lexus at the showroom and take home a demo car for the weekend. Okay. Now, the best way for you to get your client to buy from you is to give them a sample of what you can offer. Right. You have to give them, you have to give them that little sample of what they can expect. People fall in love with, uh, with, with things that they can have an emotional connection with. That's the reason as to why you will find that in a lot of places where they put up uh, pets for adoption, they actually get the person to take it home for the weekend to make sure that you know, there is a, you know, a, a connect uh, you know, per se. So that's where the variable sampling comes in. So that's where a lot of people feel that you know they don't want to give anything away for free it's not about giving anything away for free it's about getting the person to understand the value that you can provide in the long term and and the last part which which i'm a very very strong advocate of is like you never ever be a product pusher you always have to be a solutions provider and that is so so important because your client does not want to be sold to you know it's not about a one size fits all ca uh, you know uh, sales uh, technique or approach. It's all about being able to understand the needs and requirements of your client and then provide a holistic and a wholesome solution, which actually, you know, uh, looks after or addresses the pain points that your client has. So, um, you know, th that's, that's just my, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, two cents worth.
Thank you. Wonderful insights, Yusuf. Thank you so much for sharing and thank you so much for joining the session today. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot. I think so. Really insightful one. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I think uh, with this, Rajshri, I just want to uh, thank our uh, you know, sponsors and supporters, collaborators yeah. here. Yeah, please. Uh, before uh, Mani would uh, start sharing the pulse of wisdom which he has captured Correct. in his, you know, with him, and then he can share it with that. So I would like to specifically mention uh, who has uh, who has been our Southeast Asia radio partner. Uh, they are the only channel in Southeast Asia Hindi live radio channel. Anshav, can you repeat it because uh, it's not clear? Anybody can tune it to them by downloading the app Radio Mercy 24 by 7. Uh, they, uh, okay, so I said uh, Radio Mercy 24 by, uh, in Southeast Asia and uh, is having 1.4 million listeners today. Uh, so I, I would like to specifically thanks to them. Uh, with this money, I would like to request you to kind of take up and, you know, kind of give those pearls of wisdom which you have captured. Uh, again, uh, it was a wonderful uh, comeback after the weekend. And this session was very insightful. And uh, lots of lots of information that was uh, shared from the experts. And uh, it's, it's very helpful. I, I just go through some pearls of wisdom uh, which I've captured. Uh, just to start with uh, Arjun Vaidya, Dr. Arjun Vaidya, uh, whatever he has shared and whatever he's doing, it is wonderful uh, and it's great appreciation in these times. They are helping a lot of people and uh, they're trying to ensure the medicine reaches the needy. It's mm -hmm. a real, real uh, help that they're, they're trying to do in this uh, tough situation. And the best uh, pearl of wisdom I picked up from his talk is like, support through the thick and thin times to be there for your customers whenever they need the most. And one must sincerely perform their duty. So this is what exactly he was doing. And uh, thanks Vaidya, Dr. Vaidya for sharing that. And it was awesome. And moving to uh, Sarina, I was impressed with the kind of uh, creatives that you, uh, ideas that you brought to the discussion today. Uh, I really loved the art exhibition and home menu cafe for all the uh, food that is cooked and uh, presented well. Uh, maybe if I stand a chance, I would like to participate in that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I also loved the open mic competition. It was very good and very innovative. And uh, going to the pearls of wisdom, uh, the one tip that you shared, it costs 10 times more to win back the customer is really, really awesome. And uh, definitely people have to work, all founders and entrepreneurs have to work on the formula that you have said, which is purely lack, like listen, act, communicate, and know the desire for products and services. Thank you for that. It was a wonderful share. Thank you. And moving on to Mahesh sir, yeah, uh, I was impressed by the magnanimity of the events that you do, sir. Like 650 partners and 600 centers across 2,000 villages, training 1 lakh students. Wow, those numbers just speak the amount of work you do. It's magnanimous. And thank you for all the effort you're putting in, sir, to make a better India. And uh, the tips I take from your session, your, your uh, valuable session, is like, speak to at least two prospective customers. Either eight of them are existing customers and two of them who are on the win back side. And ensure your employees also talk on average of 14 customers in, in a week. So that was like more of the connect on the customers more precisely with numbers. Because these numbers are, are what are the keys, what most of the entrepreneurs mess in uh, making the connect, the direct connect with the customers. Thank you for that, sir. It was a wonderful share. And coming last to Divaspati, sir. Uh, it was very interesting to know the king, the queen, and the kingdom. 
the story is complete <laughs> it was so good <laughs> so i i realized that i always uh, thought of the story why there is only a king but today the story is complete okay. now i know what's the who's the queen and where's my kingdom so i'm very thankful for that and the tip you shared was also very awesome aim i always aim but i never thought it has to be aspiring inspiring and managing and that was also very very uh, interesting and finally our special speaker yusuf was given again another tip of savvy being savvy which is like uh, uh, search engines access to competitors value for money variable sampling and yani so all these things are really what we ignore when we think of a customer and thanks for that yusuf for that valuable input and thank you it has been a very great session and uh, we have a lot of uh, pearls of wisdom that been captured i will try to uh, tablet this and uh, share it uh, to anshav so that he can take it forward in the next thanks rajeshree thanks sharu thanks. Thank, you, thank you so much money for sharing thank, thank you brilliant. so much and uh, i have one request from sarina Oh. If we can connect <laughs> offline, and uh, I think you mentioned one of the point of celebration in tough times. So yeah. how we can make it more celebrated? All these sessions, and uh, how we can connect more and more people globally around it, so that rather than it become in uh, you know kind of intense learning sessions, we can make it more fun loving sessions as well. So if you can help us out on that, would be really great. the my thinking cap on uh and just uh, i have been to the club a number of times oh how nice oh, how <laughs> nice especially <laughs> the wine tasting has been you have have oh that's wonderful yeah and all right uh, i mean uh, i have uh, i've lived in and the east okay Riga had been my choice of a uh, place, but uh, I have friends all, all over the Andhra Pradesh. So uh, the club used to be the meeting point uh, for me to uh, go to uh, Andhra Pradesh. Wonderful! Now you know who who you have to meet when yes, you come to the yes. club. <laughs> so yeah, Sarina, you were saying you have some suggestion already. Well, uh, I think you're putting me in a spot. You need me to no, put my. No. I, I I need to put my thinking cap on for that one. Okay. But uh, but yeah, I'm sure we can we can think of something that we can uh, we can do to put this together. Yeah, I'm sure we can. So we'll we'll connect back with you, sir. Yes, I think thanks thanks all the speakers here for spending their you know valuable time and sharing pearls of wisdom with the entire world. Just want to highlight that. Uh, we are trying to we have our tv and ott channels and radio fm coverage which gives us access to 200 plus million viewership in 140 plus countries uh, this entire pulse of wisdom would also be converted into a physical hard book also into a digital book so uh, you know our core team will reach out to each of you for giving us 15 to 20 minutes of a video of your pulse of wisdom which you would like to pass on to the world and all of our 100 plus speakers who are going to talk in this 21 days business sustainability challenge would be the co-authors for the digital as well as the physical hard book so this this all pulse of wisdom is going to culminate into a wonderful book called design your unicorn which will have 100 steps 100 topics to be spoken about and around 21 days business challenge business sustainability challenge in to it so if anybody follows those 21 days schedule they will test they are destined to become a unicorn that's what uh, we are aiming for with this initiative so thanks once again to all the speakers for your valuable time and learnings thank you thank, thank you so much. much thank you thank you keep bringing keep growing Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.